Commander appreciates the sacrifice you've made, going undercover. It's good to have you back. What can I do for you? Hmm. Glad to hear it. Let's see what you got. Cost overruns, siphoning project funds? How deep does this well go? Our forensic accounting team is going to have their hands full. I'll send this to Mass right away. Let's just hope that a few rotten apples within the UC haven't spoiled the entire bunch. Find anything else? All right. Keep up the good work. We'll be here if you need us. Nice work on the siren. You keep this up and this operation might finally get the folks at Mast to shift resources. A lot of us had our doubts about you. But you're really making progress with this operation. Sentiments are shifting. Do you have anything to report? It seems you had quite the eventful mission on your hands. You still have the Crimson Fleet's trust, and you were able to spare lives in the process. As you probably guessed, not very well. Keeping Mast out of the loop regarding this particular mission has proven exceptionally difficult. But we've managed to keep your involvement in the dark. Sparing the lives of the soldiers on SY-920 has definitely made our position with the top brass much easier. Honor, loyalty and valor are exactly the attributes we admire in a CIS-DEV operative. We wouldn't have it any other way, Commander. Excuse me, sir. I hate to interrupt, but there's still the matter of the comm spike to discuss. Yes, of course, Lieutenant. Time is short, and we should get to the matter at hand. Please give me your report. With the acquisition of the comm spike, the fleet is one step closer to Crix's legacy. And the more people we arrest, the greater the chance that your infiltration is discovered. We're working against the clock here, so let's start by discussing the status of the comm spike. That all depends on what you've brought back from your mission. Aside from your eyewitness testimony, I assume you have the usual evidence that could lead to her incarceration? I can take it off your hands once we complete your debriefing, but at the moment I'm far more concerned about the comm spike. Then it's just a matter of time before she reverse engineers it to fit the fleet's purposes. So what does Delgado have you doing next? Has he solved the Bannock 4 problem? Bannock 4 is an EM-class gas giant. Your ship will need special protection to ensure the electromagnetic disturbances in the planet's atmosphere don't fry your circuits. The conduction grid? That's... Brilliant, but is it actually possible? It's 80-year-old tech. Sorry, sir. The conduction grid is how Neon generates its power. It essentially absorbs lightning strikes and converts it to usable energy. It would take a hell of an engineer to modify the technology to handle Bannock 4's EM field. An engineer, like Jasmine Durand. That's the case. Inform our contacts on Neon that our operative will be touching down there in the near future. Absolutely, sir. And before you depart, I wanted you to know that your efforts are helping us gain interest among my superiors. They're finally beginning to believe that we can take down the Crimson Fleet and make amends for the UC's embarrassing mistake. The fact that our common enemy owes its existence to the United Colonies, of course. It was the riot at the lock touched off by Jasper Creeks that inspired him to create the Crimson Fleet in the first place. Thanks to your assistance, we'll be able to rectify that mistake, and Mast will authorize an all-out assault. Of course I am, but it's a calculated risk. It's long overdue. All right, I suppose that's all for now. I'll be looking forward to your next report. Good luck. And please, be careful.
I'm not worried about the fleet taking the comm spike. Not like they have the brains to use it. What can I do for you? Anything new to report? I'll be here if you have any more questions. You have permission to speak freely. As you were. We should stick to the main plaza, unless you like getting soaked by the rain. Looking to get zoned? Yeah, you know, dusted, blazed, frosted, hi. If you weren't here to buy some Aurora, then what the heck do you want? Yeah, well, if I had a credit for every time I heard that line, I wouldn't be stuck working in this place. So, I'm guessing you're the rook that Delgado sent. Well, let me save both of us some time. Turn around, fly back to the key, and tell the big boss that I'm in no mood to screw around. We'll make this deal when he starts taking me seriously. Come on, give me a break. You're not exactly a top dog over there at the key, now are you? Sending me a rook to handle a job this risky is a goddamn insult. Are you serious? You're just gonna completely blow me off like that. I spent the last three months setting up this job, burned two contacts and a hell of a lot of credits. The whole time, I'm also keeping Bayou off our backs. That idiot even catches a whiff of money and he latches onto you like a damn leech. The few times I've dealt with Benjamin Bayou in the past have been rather unpleasant to say the least. All right, all right, I get the point. Let's just get this over with. I don't have a ton of time to stand here and screw around, so I'm gonna make this as clear as possible. You want the conduction grid tech, then you're gonna have to download it from the power core of Jennerdyne's facility in the underbelly. <laughs> Beneath your feet, genius. It's the lowest level of neon. Jennerdyne and Xenofresh are down there, along with some of the finest cuisine in the city. Some fancy name the brain trusted Jennerdyne calls the room where all the power from the conduction grid is stored. Cute, right? Hey, don't look at me. I didn't build the damn thing. All I know is that the tech inside the place is valuable. I'm talking about Jennerdyne's main power plant for Neon. 
<laughs> All their cushy offices might be up in the trade tower, but the nuts and bolts of their operation are running beneath the city. Love the confidence. But before you pull the ripcord, I'm afraid I need to add a bit of a wrinkle. While you're inside Jennerdine, I need you to plant a virus into their system. It's a simple side job that'll earn you some credits. I think you can handle it. <laughs> the elevator doesn't exactly go to the top floor in that head of yours, does it? Everything in the Crimson Fleet is accomplished through a decent helping of give and take. As in, I'm not going to give you the information to get your precious data unless you take this virus and upload it like I asked. That's because you're planning it for me as a favor. Jennerdine has all sorts of tasty, valuable snacks in their data banks, and I want access. Here, take this micro drive and access the computer in Brayson Bayou's office. It'll do the rest on its own. Yep, nepotism has its advantages. Word on the street is that the Jennerdine gig is the only one Benjamin could get for his younger brother. He's... Well, he's not the brightest. Let's just say that information can be just as lucrative as selling Aurora and keep it at that, okay? But don't worry, I promised Delgado that when it came to the conduction grid data, that's his territory. I won't touch it. It might be wireless, but you aren't going to be able to use it from here, genius. Jennerdine's got their place locked down tight. But, as usual, the weak link comes from the people that work there. I recommend you start with Ayumi Komiko, an upper-level exec at Jennerdine. Get your hands on her security pass, and you'll have the run of the place. You should be asking what won't you need it for. The facility is closed to the general public, and they keep all of their important files encrypted. Not to mention the fact that there's going to be all sorts of nasty security inside you're going to want to bypass. Ryujin Club doesn't mean shit at Jennerdine, so you're going to have to deal with Komiko and potentially her boyfriend, Benjamin Bayou. Anyway, you can find Komiko at Euphorica. Talk to the owner of the place, Micah. She'll point you in the right direction. As for dealing with Komiko herself, she's got an office in the Trade Tower if you're looking for something incriminating. The rest is up to you, Rook. When you're done, come meet me at the VIP booth in the Astral Lounge so we can celebrate. Pretty laid back club over in Ebside. Owner's name is Micah. She's young but sharp as a razor, and has gang muscle to back her up. The little Aurora lounge she has tucked away in the building is the real gold mine. Said she modeled it after opium dens on old earth. Bayou takes a cut of the profits, of course, but rumor says it's way less than he usually takes. No one knows why. Businesswoman, tough as hull plating. She's the COO at Jennerdine, and I can assure you she didn't get there with her winning smile. As for her relationships, well, that's a bit more complicated. Publicly, she's having a bit of a fling with Benjamin Bayou, but rumor has it that she's just using Bayou and having a little bit of fun on the side with Micah, the owner of Euphorica. If I were you, I wouldn't bother trying to appeal to her good nature. She's a manipulative person who uses people to get what she wants. Nepotism gets him the job at Jennerdine as their chief technician. Yet the guy doesn't know the first thing about electrical engineering. They obviously invented the position just to give them more on a salary. One of the many poorly kept secrets in Neon. Frankly, I think he's such a screw-up. Benjamin Bay, you stuck his ass in that facility under the city to keep him out of the limelight. Not much to tell, really. Thanks to their nifty little conduction grid, they're able to provide power for the entirety of Neon. Damn thing was supposed to be some kind of miracle invention turning lightning into usable electricity. Neat trick, right? Only catch is that you need a planet like Voli, where lightning strikes often enough to make it feasible. Guess how many of those exist? Ding! If you said zero, you're absolutely correct. So Jennerdine has been in dire financial straits for years. 
It's that hideous canopy over the center of the city that keeps the rich folks dry. Some folks around here call it the span. I think it's a massive eyesore, like some sort of a modern art piece gone haywire. You can't miss it. Just poke your head outside and look up. Loaning them credits? No, that's not how things work around here. The only reason they haven't folded is because they charge exorbitant fees for power. I'm talking two or three times what it costs in New Atlantis. Okay, now, on to round two of our little game. Guess who has a major stake in Jennerdine and soaks up all that delicious profit? Not a single one. In fact, there are no legal alternatives for anything in this godforsaken city. The only thing people can do is deal with the bullshit and try to get on with their miserable lives. But let's get back to round two of our little game. Guess who has a major stake in Jennerdine and soaks up all its delicious profit? That's a good one, Rook. No, it's not Jennerdine's shareholders. It's good old Benny Bayou. That son of a bitch has a finger in every single pie in the sorry excuse for a city. Jennerdine's no different. All off the books, of course. How the hell do you think Brayson Bayou got the job down there? It wasn't because of his good looks or smarts. I can promise you that. Just grab that tech and plant the virus. Should be a cinch. Need to move some merch. You got the money or the goods. here time to move on had an awkward job you just took care of don't know why you've been clearing out the backpacks but what the heck it saves me from doing it day, every shift What's even the point of doing it that way if they're just going to change it? Back off. That's an order, Welcome not to a Calvin, suggestion. The Settled System's premier financial institution. Have you tried one of our advanced teller machines? Galbank ATMs are spread throughout the Settled Systems, so you can do your banking your own way, on your own time. Galbank, where your credits work for you. I'm not going to say this twice. Get the hell away from me. Everything good? Nothing to report? I have things for you. Whatever you need, you got it. Actually, yes, I do. Here you are. 
Stay safe, darling. Yeah, what? Is this important? I'm really busy right now. Let me save you some time. If you're here for a job, we're not hiring. If you're here about the conduction grid tour, we shut it down a year ago. See that big yellow thing that's draped over almost the entire city? That's the grid, or what the locals call the span. Besides looking like some sort of madman's modern art piece, it's actually the main source of the city's power. Well, like I said, it shut down. Had to cut the entire tour staff, too. Look, I'm sorry if I'm blowing up at you, but I've got a ton of problems and no time to deal with them all. I'm afraid that things aren't going terribly well around here. Why? Because I'm sick and tired of putting on a corporate face and pretending that nothing's wrong. It's do or die time around here. We can either spin our wheels forever or worse, go under completely. I don't care if I'm allowed to or not. I'm happy to get this off my chest. The conduction grid went online almost 75 years ago. And since then, we haven't developed a single groundbreaking innovation. At this point, the money we're taking in as a power utility barely covers the waste that's going on in the research and development division. Unfortunately, no. I'm in third on the corporate ladder. One step above me is Ayumi Komiko. She's the COO of the company. And then there's Kaito Harada, our esteemed CEO who never seems to be around. No, of course not. We still produce smaller power systems and backup generators, but nothing even close to the magnitude of the conduction grid. Genadyne needs to come out with something spectacular to put us back on the map. If not, we'll remain stagnant forever, or worse. <laughs> You'd think that, right? The problem is that Brayson Bayou, Administrator Bayou's brother, is currently heading up the R&D division. I swear to you, the man doesn't know the first thing about power systems or electromagnetic technology. Isn't it obvious? Administrator Bayou clearly leaned on Ms. Komiko to get his brother hired. It's nepotism in action. I can give you 117 reasons. Our employees. If Genadyne goes completely under, how many of them will lose their jobs? How many might get cut in a restructure? My position puts me in charge of the welfare of our personnel. I can't in good conscience allow that to happen to them. Of course there are. But so far, Brayson has suppressed most of their work through pure jealousy. Look. I'm running out of options. No one above me seems to care what's going on, but I'm willing to take a chance. I have a full report on Brayson that I want to send to Administrator Bayou, but I don't know if he can be trusted. What do you think I should do? It describes my aggravation with how badly Brayson Bayou is running the Research and Development Division. I'm also including a list of all the failed experiments he's greenlit, and how much they've cost Genadyne as proof of his incompetence. I'm praying someone as financially successful as Administrator Bayou might be able to put aside his ego and look at this from a business perspective. You know what? You're absolutely right. I can't allow Brayson to run this company into the ground. Hey, look. Uh, thanks for helping me out with this. It's been on my mind for a long time. If there's anything else you need, any questions at all, feel free to ask. That's an excellent question, and the answer for it is surprisingly simple. The conduction grid is only effective in lightning-rich environments. That's why Volai was chosen as its primary development site. Genadyne has always hoped to adapt the grid's absorption technology for other applications, but nothing public has ever been announced. 
The span above the city is outfitted with a specially developed electromagnetic absorption system. When a lightning discharge hits the span, the energy is instantly distributed across the grid to prevent overload. The energy is then transferred through a series of polyphasic capacitors and rectifiers to ensure all of the negative and positive strikes are equalized. At this point, the energy is clean, and it gets stored in massive storage cells in Neon's underbelly, from which it's parceled out and used for power. Genodyne was founded in 2232 by the original designer of the conduction grid, Felicia Corbin. Working from her facility in Neon, it took her almost 25 years to get the conduction grid up and running. That was Genodyne's first and last major success. As long as it doesn't get me into serious trouble, ask away. I've only been working here for a few years now, and she's been my boss the entire time. Well, the big boss is our CEO, Mr. Harada. But I've actually never met him. He lives somewhere in New Atlantis, I think. Uh, she's my boss. She's fine, I guess. Look, like I said, I don't want to get into serious trouble. She might be a bit tough on all of us, but being responsible for Neon's power grid is a very stressful position. Sometimes that stress trickles down. Whoa. Okay, that's crossing the line. I can't discuss company matters like this. You're starting to make a lot of sense. I'm glad you understand the position I'm in here. Okay, listen. You didn't hear this from me, but I know she's up to something with Benjamin Bayou. He was in her office a few weeks ago, and they had some kind of shouting match. It got really heated until Bayou stormed out the door. I don't know what it was about, but I happen to know Miss Komiko keeps audio recordings of all her meetings in her safe. And before you ask, yes, I'll unlock it for you. Just don't tell anyone I helped, okay? Because I'm sick and tired of the corruption that's running through this city. People around here spend half their lives terrified about being backstabbed and spend the rest of it planning on how they're going to screw over someone else. Something rotten is going on in this company, and one day, I hope to find out what it is. Sure, sure, no problem. Thanks for taking the time to talk. No time to chat. Can't talk, I've got a deadline coming up. Haven't met our CEO, Mr. Harada? Me either. He's never around. What? I'm working here. 